And we will begin with the Pac-12 Big Ten ACC Alliance. Now, Chris, this came across on Friday evening. It broke by Max Olson, Matt Fortuna, and Nicole Auerbach over at The Athletic. They were the ones that had the first details on this. Adam Rittenberg came out with a few more things afterwards over at ESPN, and then everybody took off with it. 247, CBS, blah, 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 blah. This is interesting because when you see Alliance, you immediately hear, or you immediately think, scheduling Alliance, right? So you're thinking, okay, so these three are getting together. Well, that, that leaves out the Big 12 and the SEC, so what are those two leagues going to end up doing going forward? But this was really nothing to do with scheduling. It might lead to scheduling in the future. But the, the whole thing here is George Klyovkov, the Pac-12 commissioner, Jim Phillips, the new ACC commissioner, and Kevin Warren, the new Big Ten commissioner, all of these less than two years on the job, right? Kevin Warren started last year in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Jim Phillips just started as the ACC commissioner, took over for uh, John Swafford, and... Uh, who uh, George Klyovkov just took over in July. So these guys are baby fresh, brand new, trying to figure this whole thing out. And basically what they're doing is forming a voting alliance so that when there are issues that come up, such as the college football playoff expansion, the in- change of NCAA governance, just a- everything. This is a shot at the SEC. This gives them 41 votes. If they all decide to align together, 41 votes to the SEC's 16. And poor Bob Bowlesby, this ain't no good for him, right? Because his guys are not even involved in this. They they don't even look at him as a Power 5 conference anymore. That will let you know the future of the Big 12 right now. They're not even involving him. The Big 12 is nowhere near this. So we had talked a a couple of weeks ago about a Big 12, Pac-12 alliance, and Klyovkov is like, hmm, I don't know if I want to get involved with that. So this whole thing is strange. Very strange that they would start talking about this right now. What were your thoughts when you when you first heard about this? I really don't like the voting alliance thing at all. I think individual schools, not just conferences, should vote their best interest. I believe that. I believe that in voting nationally. I believe that you as a person should do what is best for you. You should vote in your best interest every time. I don't like party lines. I don't like this because you tend to have to now compromise a lot of who you are and a lot of what's best for you to appease the party. This is what this is. I In no world in which this is going to be beneficial for Oregon State or Rucker or any of these smaller schools – because they're now disenfranchised to vote in their best interest and now have to vote for what's best for USC and Ohio State. Yes. Congratulations. This Uh, is what you've got. Matt Fortuna, staff writer for The Athletic, the question was, why would the three conferences do this? It says, on Tuesday, the NCAA announced the formation of a constitution committee with the hopes of expediting a proposed governance model. It is there in voting power where an alliance among the ACC, Big Ten, and Pac-12 would really show those three conferences' power, 41 votes to the 16 of the expanded SEC. Phillips, who was announced as one of the 23 members of the Constitution Committee, has told ADs that strength comes in numbers, not in one conference stacking the deck. This is where the real difference could come for these three conferences. All right, so these are, when it comes to formalities and, and you know, playoffs and all this stuff, or, or the number of teams, whatever, I don't like this. But as long as it stays there and it stays off the field. And this is what I'm talking about. Right now, our final four is selected by a group of people who basically vote on who they think should be the four best teams. Is this now going, are we going to see ACC, Big Ten, and Big Pac 12 schools helping to push one another to the top, basically weeding out anybody that's not one of them unless they just have an overwhelming resume? That, that can't be argued with. The other thing, Heisman Trophy, is nothing but votes, and it's done by writers, yes, but also former winners who tend to vote party lines. We saw years and years ago, Tim Tebow did not win his second Heisman when had everybody in the country voted him 
not first. He was obviously the best player in the year that year. It wasn't close, by the way. I yeah. think the difference between him and Sam Bradford and 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 what was it, Case Keenum? I, not Case Keenum, Colt McCoy. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think was close. I think he was significantly better than those other two. All right, but but he was not just not picked third for all those. He was left off the ballot for Graham Harold by all of the Big Twelve voters and all of the Big Ten voters. Big Ten voters didn't want anybody other than Archie Griffin to be a two-time winner, and the Big 12 was obviously invested in one of the Big 12 winning that. Had he got third-place votes and and not first-place or second-place, just third-place votes by all the people that left him off their ballot for political reasons only because there's no world where you could make Graham Harrell better than him, he would have won the landslide. He would have won in a damn landslide. So this is my issue is now, are you going to see awards and the right to compete for the championship now going to uh, teams that don't necessarily deserve it and teams that do deserve it more often than not getting left out? It's going to be interesting. This is basically politics involving themselves in football, right? Yes. Foot- politics it's, are it, taking over football. It's everything It's everything I hate about politics, too. It is... I'm compromising what's best for me so I can do what's best for the big boys involved. And I hate everything about it. I hate everything about it. The good force is going to sell their soul to help Clemson and Florida State and the big boys of their conference. Yes. The good news about this is it looks like the Power 5 leagues are not going to poach Big 12 members. So maybe that's good. But I don't know what it means for the Big 12 going forward when they're not even included in this. You know, I, I don't know what to make of that. If you were all trying to get back at the SEC, wouldn't you want the league that had been done wrong by the SEC? And, and not that we're saying that what the SEC did was wrong. I think anybody would have done that in that situation. But it, it seems like you would want to include the Big 12 at the table if you were trying to get at the SEC, right? The issue with that is, Gary, is none of the teams left have enough clout or pool to be worth taking on. That They're worth it to, to you know, basically what, what I think the best thing that could ever happen out of this is you take the best of the Big 12, not all the Big 12, take the best of the Big 12, and maybe all of them, I guess, and, and the best of the American and the Sun Belt and you find a way to merge that together. Or the Mountain West, same thing. You you find a way to get 16 top teams out of there, and, and that's their only co- way of competing at a power level. If they were to do that, if you were to take the top-tier teams from all of those conferences and find a way to build a, a conference, I do think you could legitimately consider it a power conference. They would not have an Alabama, a Clemson, Ohio State at the top, but... Everything in the middle would not just be able to compete with everybody else. They would absolutely have a shot at beating everybody else from top to bottom. Yeah, I think I, I believe that you're right. I believe you're right on that. This this whole thing is interesting. It, we did talk earlier about scheduling. The specifics on how a scheduling pack might work remain unclear. But again, the alignment here is for voting purposes, basically so that the SEC does not just take over. And... While there is a part of me that believes that that's good, there is also a part of me that believes "Mm, this could get squirrely really quick. So we'll see what ends up happening. This is not uh, officially announced. It's not formalized. Yeah, no, no. This is just a handshake agreement. But here's the thing. The first time somebody gets their throat cut, it all goes away. Oh, yeah. It's the same thing in real politics. The first time somebody does something to the benefit of Ohio State and the detriment of USC – the people out west are going to get rib shit pissed and they're going to not take it. And, they're, and, and now everything goes away. Or something happens between the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and it cuts Clemson or Miami out of something. Then that's when you're going to have big problems. Oh, yes. Oh, I can yes. see the Pac-12 and the Big Ten staying together because they've been together with the, the Rose Bowl. They think that's the greatest bowl that's ever been invented. And then, though, of course, there was uh, the COVID stuff last year where they both canceled their season within minutes of each other. That's right. They, 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 they other. basically went hand-in-hand, hand, whatever the Big Ten did. The, the you know, the Pac-12 just followed, followed the, the, you know, the leader. And, and went, which is almost like they didn't think for themselves at all. That is another thing I want to bring up is the, 
you know, we, we're having spikes in this country with COVID and everything else, right? And I would like to believe that we are smart enough to know that it doesn't mean that you have to cancel everything. But if we get to a point where students come back on campus, because across the country they should be coming back within the next couple of weeks, if students come back to campus, things go haywire like they did. Remember, it was down to the Big 12 last season. The Big 12 had to decide that they were going to play because the ACC and the SEC were going to play, but they wanted that third. So they wanted it to be a majority. And the Big 10 and the Pac-12 were aligned. They said, yep, we're out of here. Like, we are not doing this. Does it come down to, well, now that the Big 10 is the big fish in the alliance with the ACC and the Pac-12, does the Big 10 just get to decide everything that's going on? Because we saw last year, that I don't know how much we should trust Kevin Warren was making gigantic decisions. It's not just that. Let's let's say the the Big Ten makes that decision, and the Pac-12 follows suit, just like like the good little soldiers that they are. And because of the relationship that the new ACC commissioner has with the Pac, the Big Ten, coming from there, he wants to do it. But Clemson, Florida State, Miami, and North Carolina tell him, "Hey, bro, we hired you." We're playing football, and, and you can go back up north if you want. But we're going to stay down here. We're going to play football. And now now we got a different conversation altogether. Yeah, because then we don't now, have an alliance at all. Now we've got all. one where the commissioner wants to do one thing, and the big boys that pay the commissioner's salary want to do something else. And what happens there? Do they have enough pool and clout to get that guy fired and just say, hey, man, we got buyer's remorse. We'd like out of this deal. Whatever we owe you, we'll pay you, move on, and we'll we'll find somebody else. Then that alliance goes bye-bye. Because I'm going to tell you this, that new AD might want to follow the Big Ten. I do not believe there's any way on earth you're going to get Clemson, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Miami, Florida State to buy into that. And those are your four or five biggest schools. That's, you're, you're 100% right. I'm very we, curious. No, no, nobody in the ACC cares at all. That Boston College might not want to play. That's that true. Syracuse might not want to play. They they do not care at all about that. About what those guys want. Do you want to be in the ACC or not? Because if you don't, doors right there. Yeah. Because yeah. we'll go, we'll go pick up Memphis tomorrow. We'll go pick up Cincinnati tomorrow. We'll go pick up West Virginia tomorrow. Well, they showed and be better like, at football and basketball than we were with you. They showed that they can pick up a team to be in their conference for one season. I mean, Notre Dame did it, and they do like, it quick. They yes. get this, no, and I don't think it'd be I don't think it'd be a one season thing. I think it would be a thing where we're breaking contracts, baby. If you want to stop us from playing, and we want to play, I think this is where you, these big money schools that have unlimited funds have no problems just setting money on fire. Yeah, yeah. Not not for the principal, not for the principal where they think we're going to play, and you're not going to stop us from playing. So yeah. I'm curious to see what the athletic director would do. Or what the conference the commissioner would do. I mean, yeah, what the yeah. conference commissioner would do if we get into a situation where things are bad and we want to start shutting back down, but football says, okay, well, we're going to play. We're going to do another COVID year just like we did last year. We already know how to do this. And, you know, the Big Ten says, nope, we learned from our lesson last year. We don't want to do that. Pac-12 says we're following them. And the ACC says, nope. We're not now the alliance is busted. It's gonna be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything Podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B G Anini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.